part of my work here is to do pure fundamental scientific research and another part is to do business engagement, sort of like a project scientist, to act as an interface between academia and industry. Personally, I think the limit at this stage is still the cost, but I believe as long as there's any key application of graphing coming out, the supply chain can be built up immediately, which will definitely lead to a decrease of the cost and obviously to a wide spread of the graphing applications. In terms of the graphing research, apparently Manchester University does a very good job. However, the idea of the academia, academia and the industry are slightly different. For the academics, they, are, they would like to make it better. But for industry, they would like to make it working at a reasonable cost. And this difference in the idea, that's a very big gap. That's why we need the industry to engage more, to pull a bit, to get more trained graphing engineers. When a new exciting material comes about, people will get inflated expectation. In the case of graphene, the reason why uh, the hype was created is because really the unique properties of this material mean that this is a new material platform. And by platform, I mean a material that can be used in a variety of different applications, ranging from energy like batteries to flexible electronics, wearable displays. So the sheer amount of possibility makes graphene an exciting material across a variety of disciplines and hence it can create even a bigger hype. Every new material requires a long time for its development. If we take uh, uh, carbon fibers or if we take uh, diamond-like carbon, it took between 20 to 40 years from the original uh, investigation of the material to the mass application and the same will take for graphene. So I expect it will take another 5 to 10 years before we, we can really see the mass market in terms of graphene. There is a difference between research in the lab, usually this is quick, and now even today I could show you in a lab a graphene laser, graphene detector, graphene composite, graphene battery, graphene supercapacitor. That is not an issue, but it takes a very long development period to get this integrated into a factory with the specs that are required for a mass market application. So I think the biggest impact of the flagship is to have created a community in Europe working towards a common goal in a coordinated way. On the top of it, the Graphene flagship has sent a clear message to US, Asia uh, and so on about the importance of this new material and so similar programs or, or, or efforts are now being uh, done in all the other countries to bring graphene from the lab to the factory floor. Tutti materials like graphene have many unique uh, properties that make them attractive for a variety of applications. For example, graphene is a good conductor and is also flexible, and that can be a good combination for flexible electronics. It is taking so long to incorporate graphene and other 2D materials into products because it takes time to explore the properties of the material before understanding how those materials and how those properties change when integrated with other uh, components. The key challenge is what works at a lab scale might not work in a realistic industrial scale. The ability to replace metals in electronic devices can be a game changer in flexible electronics applications. When new materials come into the space, they challenge the way we think about things, they provide potential applications, whether it's um, commercially or whether it's to design new structures. And so it's just that av new avenues open up and provide new opportunities for both fundamental science all the way through to applications. By using graphene in my research, I can actually provide insight into how to make batteries and particularly the carbons in batteries last longer. One of the exciting areas that people are thinking about using graphene is to try and make more flexible batteries. So if I want a mobile phone that can, you know, can flex, or I want a, a book where I want to be able to bend the book and I've got a battery that flexes, what sort of materials can I use to help or make my batteries more flexible? And it's thought that graphene might help hold the materials together and allow you to make a completely flexible tablet. So I think that graphene will play its role. I think that developing new batteries for flexible electronics 
is a big challenge and it will be part, it will be one possible solution to enable some of these technologies. So, and it's providing a lot of um, new avenues for exploration. Do I think it's going to be the wonder, wonder material that's going to give us a battery that's going to revolutionise an electric vehicle? No. But do I think it's one of a suite of materials that's going to enable different things? Yes. The applications that get to me are the composite materials, conductive inks. We've heard about biomedical sensors that detect pathogens and the changes in blood glucose. And being carbon, it can be recycled. Fantastic news. It's only been 10 years since they discovered it. 10 years young is graphene. Most innovative materials take a long time to do. Carbon fibre took 25 years into, to, to, to come to fruition. And now it's everywhere. The priorities of universities and businesses differ. Universities come up with the ideas. Businesses have to deliver them into the real world. Provided they offer opportunities with materials that really are commercially available in scale, businesses will work with them and do that. That is absolutely crucial in getting graphene into the commercial world.